Hi, this is Raheem Zulfikar Ali from Excel Basement Private Limited. Today in this uh, comprehensive video tutorial, we will learn that how to create a dashboard by using either no formula or very less formulas. And we will be utilizing Microsoft Excel pivot table, slicers, charts and connectivity between them. And uh, I will explain you that how to do it and we can within very less time we can create some dynamic dashboards and present to our senior managers or vice president in our organization and also two rules regarding the dashboard reporting which are very important the first one is model view controller and the second one is graph rule i have also explained these two rules in my previous video where I created a dashboard in Microsoft Power BI related to HR. So again in this video for the viewers or the members of Excel Basement or the new visitors if they have missed it out so they will have a new learning that how to utilize these two rules in creating dashboards within Microsoft Excel. So I hope you will like this video and uh, let's get start. So particularly within excel we we know that we have generally a database and we select that data and we create a pivot table so we will be utilizing the built-in features of microsoft excel in order to create a very quick dashboard and that will be interactive and uh, we will create some multiple slicers on it and definitely a good design also channel which is on youtube excel basement private limited where you can watch the videos and update yourself you can join our facebook page as well we are also on instagram do follow us with the name excel basement excel basement also writes a blog uh, we usually update our blog on a weekly basis where we put some articles related to power platform microsoft excel word powerpoint and some other microsoft technologies so if you are keen to learn and read do visit our blog that is excelbasement.org blog so far, I have contributed two articles in the Institute of Bankers of Pakistan quarterly journal. And uh, if you want to know more about business intelligence and specific to the banking sector, you can just visit this link. This is an additional material where nowadays, as we know that the data analytics and BI and also the AI is very important for the organizations where they are going digitalized in 2020 and onward years. So it's important. With the use of Microsoft Excel, we, all, we should also know that how the Power BI or the other BI tools are very important for a sector to do some advanced analytics. So this you give you a this these articles will give you a different paradigm in order to think that how you can proceed with your organization data and make it useful and meaningful and you can take some good decisions. So let's start with a rule that is called MVC model view controller. So the model view controller says that you must have three sheets at least in your Excel dashboard. The first one contains a raw data. The second one contains a formulas or your workings. The, the numbers you want to extract from the data with the help of Excel functions. So in this particular video tutorial, we will be using very less formulas and our aim is to uh, use either no formula and maximize the features and create a dashboard. So we have a separate sheet of data then we have a separate sheet for the formulas and the numbers to get from the data and the last one more sheet for the dashboard where all the visuals will combine together and we will be applying some designing rules so the mvc stands for that at least a user should have three sheets don't put all the stuff in one sheet like data formulas and dashboard in entire one sheet this will create a mess for you the another rule is called the crap rule which is an acronym contrast repetition alignment and proximity so there are some techniques in order to uh, divert the attention of the audience towards the dashboard so they can focus on main part of the dashboard first and other in the remaining time so we have some techniques to do it and these are related to the this crap rule so we will learn that how to use crap rule in dashboards so c stands for contrast now for example in this particular example here in example there are four boxes which are of same colors so as an audience perspective anyone can see any box at any time 
but if what if we want to make sure that all the audience or or the people who are watching that dashboard can focus on one part and how we can divert their attention so there are some techniques changing the color either create a border to that shape or object change the shape change the size orientation or the distance of the objects so these are some of the techniques in which you can make a, an object a bit different so that it should be focused first when a user see a dashboard so contrast by is related to a changing in color thickness shape size position and distance in the crap rule r stands for repetition so here you can see a dashboard which is created in power bi so it's related to training feedback analytics and you can see a repetition of colors repetition of fonts repetition of ideas or visuals so repetition is also important because if you don't repeat the ideas visuals colors or the fonts it will be very fancy and it will be of no more use and the audience or the user will not be more focused on the dashboard so it's very important to repeat some of the objects like color visual elements fonts and ideas in the crap rule the third alphabet is a which is the alignment so it's very necessary to align all the objects properly horizontal vertically so that our attention should not divert on the distance of between the objects but moreover we should focus on the relevant object and put them in a sequence that the most important one should be on top and the approach of top to bottom you should add visuals or the charts according to the requirement and the priority in the dashboard so alignment is very necessary the last one is the proximity which says that the item close together are likely to be perceived as a part of same group there should be a relationship there should be a meaning with the visuals so without me visuals or a visual which is creating too much noise should be eliminated so when you apply the contrast repetition alignment to all together and you form a dashboard for a specific purpose for example in this slide you can see a sales performance dashboard all the visuals are related to each other and they are creating a proximity a meaning to it so this means that you have created a right dashboard so proximity is related to the ideas messages and data all right so now we will be creating a dashboard within microsoft excel and we have a data set so let's first explore the data set understand it and then afterwards we will try to create a dashboard with some steps and they are very easy any intermediate user or a basic user can do it so we have a data which have certain columns there are almost 24 columns in the data set starting from the order id order date customer id customer name related cities their abbreviations country salesperson names region ship date month quarter and then accordingly some more columns like payment type how the customers are paying to you either from check credit card or cash uh, the main products their categories main categories and definitely some numbers columns like unit price quantity revenue and shipping fee so these are some of the columns in, in a data set and we need to start analyzing from a dis different perspectives as required by the management to improve the sales so the target is to improve the sales to analyze sales by region wise or by a certain different time period so that we can take decisions for the next year so let's proceed towards the dashboard the first step for a user is to create a design on a paper and after the approval of that sketch you need to design that exact interface in microsoft excel right and this particular excel file is also following the mvc rule which is the model view controller as you can see that the database is in a separate sheet workings is, a, is in a separate sheet and the dashboard will be in a different sheet so there are three at sheets at least in a dashboard file right so you can link things together because in the database if it if the time period contains weekly so this data will get appended or a monthly basis so we don't need to put the calculations and the dashboard visuals on the same uh, sheet because it will disturb the dashboard and our other calculations as well 
So there are and so there are always three sheets in your dashboard. I have just added a shape and I have made it a color of blue. We will uh, carry the blue theme color. And uh, this is a general text box at the right side. And I have written for the year 2019. So in our database, we have only one year, just 2019. The title, which is on top left side, is called Sales Analysis Dashboard. Uh, bottom two more shapes. Uh, one is with a dark blue color and one with a gray and we have written quick summary so we can put some key figure numbers here uh, but before that we will uh, create some visuals uh, situation by situation and we will put it on our dashboard so let's get start so i will go to my database and i will select my database and i will quickly insert a blank pivot table so now let's get start the first one is related to the sales trend we want to show a sales trend time wise month wise so i will rename this spreadsheet as sales trend and uh, i will put region in the filters and then order dates in the rows as you can say that it's automatically is grouped into months and the revenue into the values right you can ungroup as well and you can check that this is the order date column and again you can just right click and go to the group and you can group it to the month wise or year wise as you like you can just format the numbers by going to the home tab and using the number group and we will just select this pivot table and click on insert and create a line chart right so after creating a line chart, uh, all those objects which are necessary, all the uh, elements, chart elements which are necessary, will, we will keep them and unnecessary elements will be delete. So we don't need these buttons. So I will just right click on it. And from this contextual menu, we will click on hide all buttons on chart. We don't need a legend. So we will delete that. So the we will rename the title as sales trend month wise okay we need to put the data labels so i will just right click on the line and i will click on add data labels and we need to have all these data labels on the above side okay we don't want these grid lines so i will just click on it and press the delete key we don't want this vertical axis because already we have the data label so we can focus more uh, so I will just click on vertical axis y axis and I will press the delete key right and I can just resize by its pointers and what more I can do is I can also shorten the numbers as well if I want to so let's learn that how to short the numbers because these are full num full figure numbers so I will just right click on this sum of revenue column in the pivot and I will click on value field settings click on number format it will open a dialog window for format cells and here in the custom we will set a format so these are the uh, amount in dollars so i will add a symbol of dollar here first and then hashtag and then comma separator and also these are these will be the numbers in thousands so i will add an alphabet which is called k okay and okay and I will press the OK. So now you can see that we have shortened the numbers and it looks and gives us more readable view now. So I will just copy this visual or you can just cut this visual as you like. So I will just copy this visual and I will go to my dashboard sheet and I will press Ctrl V to paste this. And I can put anywhere as, as I like or as I want to adjust. But for the meantime, I am just putting on in the center of this particular dashboard sheet, right? Okay, so now I will make a copy of this particular sheet, which is called sales trend by just holding the control key and left mouse key holding together and then dragging and drop. And now the second sheet will be deal count by revenue. So we will create a new visual and a new pivot table. So we will modify it. So I don't need this chart and I will enable the field list right now in this particular pivot table we will 
add filters in the region. So now in this particular pivot table, we have region in the filters. That's correct. Now we don't need uh, the order order dates. Instead, we need revenue to be in the rows. And we will make a grouping of, of this particular column. So I will just right click on it and I will go to group. And I will say starting from zero and till 4000 and OK. And instead of sum, we will have a counting. So we will know that how many transactions has been done in this particular slab. So as you know that we have applied the custom formatting in the previous pivot, so we need to just remove that. It's simple. Right click, go to value field settings, number format and keep it general. Instead of custom, keep it general. And press OK. And we need to make it as a count. So we can say that there are 88 transactions has been done within thousands to 2000 range of revenues. And now we will create a visual. We will select this data and go to insert and creating a column chart. So we'll do again some customizations. So we don't need legend. We don't need all these numbers, all these buttons, grid lines. We will rename this particular chart as uh, deal count by revenue and we will just also in increase the width of these columns so that's very simple right click format data series and decrease the percentage of gap width okay and now you can just resize this chart press ctrl c so press ctrl c and then go to the dashboard sheet and press ctrl v and then you can place it for as your own choice as you would like to okay so i hope this concept has been clear to you now i will put this particular trend chart as well right we can just make these visual Research because as we know that we need to print that visual later on as well. So we need to think about printing aspect as well. Now the third one. So again, I will just hold the control key and press the left key and I will just drag and drop to make it a duplicate sheet. Why we are making duplicate sheet? Why we are not going to database every time and creating a new pivot? So remember that that's very important and a key point of this entire dashboard that you know that as an excel user when you create a pivot table it's it has a memory cache and what we are doing is that we need to link all the objects with a certain slicers so if the memory will be same of the pivot tables it will be help us to join all the pivots at the end with a slicer if we create a new pivot every time from a database the memory cache will not be same and we will not be able to connect all the visuals which will be available in dashboard with our slicer so that's very important that's why we are just uh, creating a duplicate sheet every time and uh, giving a different aspect of analysis uh, as we know that because the memory cache will be same so it will help us to connect the visuals with the slicers and it it will be dynamic and interactive okay so that's the reason and it's important to understand so number three the different aspect is now this time we will make sales by region okay and that's very simple uh, we will put region in the rows this time and instead of count we will make it as a sum and now you can see that we have got our visual as a column chart and we will rename that sales by region the title of this particular chart and we don't want this vertical axis. We need to add data labels. So just right click and click on add data labels, right? And you can just format these numbers as well. Of Once you are ready with the visual, just press control C and go to your dashboard sheet and uh, press the control V button in order to just uh, paste that visual. And now you can just uh, put it on your dashboard
so now you can observe that it takes a time to just align the objects properly because we have studied the crap rule and according to it we need to correctly align the objects objects right now one more thing that uh, let's uh, add the uh, slicers in this particular dashboard as well so let me just move these uh, visuals so that there should be space of uh, for the slicers so you can select any pivot table because at the end we will connect those slicers with every pivot so you can make slicers from any pivot table so i will go to analyze tab and i will click on slicer and i will add a slicer for month quarter and uh, region right and i will just press ctrl x to cut to cut these uh, slicers and i will move them into my dashboard worksheet control v and uh, instead of a vertical list we will make some customizations so i will go to the slicer and here in the columns instead of one i will write four and i will just resize my slicer i don't want this title of region because it's understood that east north south west pertains and represent the region so i just need to go to slicer settings and uh, i will just uncheck this display header so that it should have more space in my slicer as well and i will put it on top here right okay now we need to customize the month and quarter as well in a similar way so for the quarters i will again go to slicer and i will put four in the columns field and i don't want the header to be display and i will just make it resize and i will put it on my dashboard top side all right so now we have that as well similarly for the months there are 12 months so i will go to again slicer tab and in the columns field i will just write 12 so that this vertical list should be converted into horizontal and i will just resize this visual we don't want the header so going to the slicer setting and uncheck the display header and then we will move that slicer on top of our dashboard from here all right now you can change the color as well so i will put the dark blue color for this my month slicer a different color for my quarter slicers right and now your definitely time will be consuming and resizing of these objects definitely and after some time you will be successfully uh, adjusted all these uh, slicers height and width right okay now let's say if i click on any of the uh, region here for example east so you can see that only one uh, visual is being changing right and if i click on any of the month only this particular visual is changing because we have not connected the slicer with every pivot table now for doing that it's very easy what what we can do is i will just right click on the slicer and from this contextual menu i will click on report connections and you can see that these slicers have been made from from a specific pivot table of sales by region but definitely if i want to create an interactivity between all the other objects as well because the memory cache is same of all the pivots so i i will just check mark on the other pivots in this list and i will press ok similarly for the second slicer right click report connections and make sure that you have check mark all the pivots available in this workbook in different sheets right click report connections and do a check mark now next time when you click on any of the region you can see that all your three visuals are changing and you can select any of the specific months you want to see on your dashboard so for selecting all what you can do is select select click on the first uh, month and then hold the shift key and press the last month of your slicer it will work as an all position right so i hope you understand this logic now we will create three more sheets with three more different visuals and also we will connect them with the slicers and at the end this would be 
overall an interactive dashboard based on a slicers and charts and pivot tables. And in the quick summary area, we will put some key figure numbers from the data. Okay. So let's make uh, the remaining part of this dashboard. All right. So let's create another visual. So I will simply make a copy of this existing sheet and I will rename this as payment type. And in this particular pivot table, we will be dragging the region in the filters and then payment types in the rows and sum of revenue. Right. So we can see that uh, cash check in credit card accordingly. And we will rename this header or title of a chart as payment type. And this visual is, is is still not correct. And we will make a different visual this time. So I will just right click on this visual and I will click on change chart type. And this time I will select a donut chart for that. Right and i need to give a color which should be blue so you can select the colors and i can just make sure that my data labels is are visible so i will make it white color right and i also want a legend so i will check mark on legend and i want them at the bottom of this visual so once my visual is ready i will just copy this visual and now i will go to dashboard and I will just press Control V to paste it. Right. And I will put it on my dashboard. With a proper following all the proper rules. I will just make it a resize. Right now next. Again, I will just copy this one more sheet and uh, what we can do. Remember that we are uh, recording this and learning this basically video with an approach of uh, using very less formulas or either no formulas to create a dashboard in excel with in very less time okay so if you go for formula approach definitely you can do a lot of things but there are definitely you need to spend a lot of hours for that as well and you need to be very strong in, in the formulas approach so there are some of the recommended functions to use in dashboards like people use indirect offset index match we look up some ifs count ifs to get the numbers from the data and to make it dynamic and interactive when they put on their dashboards so in this video tutorial we are trying our level best to make sure that we can use built-in features in order to uh, build a dashboard in very less time and to present in, in front of the management right so in the second last sheet we will make another visual which will says sales by represent okay and this time we will make some changes definitely in our pivot table so that will be again region will be in, in the all and uh, representatives instead of payment type we need that salesperson to be here in ROS and definitely the amounts and this time the visual will be as a column chart so i will just change the chart type is into a column chart right and i don't want a legend for this and also the vertical axis i will just turn on the data labels and uh, we will format that data labels as a black color here right and we will rename the title as sales by representatives all right we don't need some grid lines here we'll just delete them so control c and then again we will go to our dashboard C sheet and we'll press the control v so you can press control x to cut that visual as well as you like as i told you earlier right so now this visual is being properly placed on our dashboard now the last visual and then we will be going for very few formulas to get the uh, key numbers from from the data set now again i will just copy this sheet and this time we will 
be extracting top five customers from our data set and for doing that what we need to do is again i will just click on show field list and from here instead of salesperson we need to have customer names and we will open the raw labels and from here we will go to value filters you will see a top 10 in the sub menu and here we just need top five so i will write five here based on sum of revenue and i will press ok and this time i will change the visual type as uh, a bar chart and i need to also sort this visual as well so i will go to again this raw labels expanding the options from this menu i will click on more sort options and i will select ascending for sum of revenue right so we got this visual ready and uh, we just want to make sure that the width of this visual should be increased so format data series and increase the cap width so once we are done with the visual and we also need to rename the title as well this represent to the top five customers right so control c and then we will go to the dashboard sheet and we will click or we will press control v and we will adjust this visual on our dashboard right now what is the step remaining is that we need to have some key uh, numbers from the data where we will be using some functions uh, but before that we need to also uh, link all these below three objects with the slicers for doing that I will right click on the slicer and I will go to report connections and I will check that if all the pivot tables are connected yes from the second slicer right click report connections so all check marks are being done on all the pivots and again for the region slicer report connections yes now you can see that if i click on any of the slicer here let's suppose if i select only east region so all these six visuals will get changed see that east north south west north and south right and if I select any of some some of the few months within these regions so I can have uh, very quickly I can just analyze my data from six different aspects so this is how I hope you like this techniques to create a dashboard in very less time by just uh, having the uh, applying the features and utilizing utilizing the built-in features of Microsoft Excel and they are very awesome if you are using some of the latest versions like Excel 2016 or 2019 right even for the 2013 as well but if you are using 2007 you will not find slicer in that version right okay so now the last part of for our, this dashboard and then it will be completed and it will be ready to present in front of your senior management right so so far we have completed more than 80 percent of our dashboard with no formulas and for just for a few key numbers we will be writing some fun functions here so let me j quickly just uh, make the name ranges for each of the column so i will select my entire data i will go to formulas and i will click on create from selection and make sure that you have a check mark on top row so within within a second uh, excel this feature has created a name range for each of the column from your data set as you can see here right and we can utilize these name ranges in our functions so I will move towards my working sheet where we will be uh, extracting some of the highlighted key numbers. For example, total revenue. What is the total revenue so far? For the total revenue, definitely I will use sum of revenue column and that's it, right? Then highest revenue for of regions. So we have four regions like uh, east, west, north and south so i will be using some ifs in the first function argument we will have a revenue column and then in the criteria range one will be the region column then in that particular region column we are looking for the east and i will just copy and paste 
and here I will use the max function x and match function so the highest uh, revenue of region is for the north which has been extracted from the index and match and the max from uh, these four particular regions definitely have different figures but the highest one is for for the north right so it there could be many different strategies when you come when it comes to the formulas and functions that how you drive the number from a data set right so i'm using some of the basic strategies so that everyone can understand then we need to have highest repre representative revenue so definitely we need a uh, names of all the representatives and then we will find the same approach uh, the total number of transactions so line uh, the count a on uh, a column which is called order id and it says 369 highest city revenue so we need to have a list of cities and then we will be using the max function to get that revenue of highest city in their respective name from index and match so So once we got all the key numbers from our data set by applying some Excel functions, now we will put them in a, in a very correct formatting uh, in, a, in our dashboard. So what I can do is here, I will go to insert and I will click on shapes and I will insert a text box. And once you are, once you added the text box, just go to the formula bar, add an equal sign and link this text box with a certain other cell in a worksheet so from here total revenue so whatever will be changed in the workings particular this c4 cell definitely will be automatically changed in this text box so that's why we have linked this from the working sheet instead of writing manual right so total revenue we will make it a format so that it should look neat and nice and we will just turn off the shape fill no fill no outline and make it a bit bold we will press ctrl c and ctrl v again from the second text box we will link this text box with a total revenue number right and you can you need to just format all these numbers in a proper format so that it should reflect correctly text box right and let's make it a big in size all right so total revenue so similarly we will uh, add all the text boxes of all these uh, key important numbers and after that it our dashboard will be completed so now we got all our key numbers like total revenue, highest revenue by region, uh, highest revenue of a representative, total number of transactions and the highest revenue by city. It could be definitely uh, more key figures or the key numbers you would be interested to find from your data set by applying uh, these kind of functions like sum ifs or index and match to get from that data sets, right? So now our dashboard is completed and let me just 
make it one view all right so this is our dashboard which we have created in very less time uh, the crap rule is being applied all the formatting a theme color is being done in this dashboard objects are properly aligned repetition of fonts colors ideas are there and uh, without any more complex formulas we have set up our dashboard in a very less time and now it's a dynamic dashboard so whenever we click on any of the region uh, the position gets changed the visuals get changed right and you can filter all these visuals uh, via slicers of months quarters and regions so i hope you like this video and you can create these kind of uh, awesome dashboards at your workplace in very less time thank you